Good Saturday morning. This again is a letter to the Romans, okay? It's fourth chapter. He says, brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes from faith. See that? For this reason, it depends on faith, so that it may be a gift, and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, namely the Jews, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He's our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. He is our, maybe Abraham, it, he is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He created and he redeemed. See, he believed, namely Abraham. He believed, hoping against hope. See? Remember what it was. He trusted God that he would, He was an old man and he, and he and Sarah never had any children. He believed. That's what he means when he says, uh, he, and calls into being what doesn't exist, namely Isaac, <laughs> you know? Yeah. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations. Why? He didn't have any kids, and he was a geezer. He was old. According to what was said, thus shall your descendants be. See? He believed, had no evidence, no tricks. He simply, Abraham is the model of faith because he simply believed that God could even bring life out of death. So in that sense, he is, as we believe, that Christ brings life out of death, that Christ rose. So it's a parallel. See? But you might as well say that uh, Sarah was sterile and Abraham was old. They were no longer child, capable of child, child, childbearing. And yet, because they believed and trusted, Sarah became pregnant and gave birth to Isaac, who gave birth to Jacob, and then the 12 tribes and the great Jewish tradition, the great Jewish heritage. Why? Because Abraham believed and trusted that God could even make him fertile, despite his age. Not by any gimmick, but simple belief as trust and trust as belief. That's the truth, you see. He's the perfect model of faith. And in a sense, so are we, in a way. We're believing in something that, if, if reduced to reason or rational argument, is absurd. Namely, that Christ, A, was God, and B, he died and rose. Do we have no proof of that in, an, in, a, in a true philosophical, scientific sense? Yet we believe. And the martyrs die for what they believe. People join religious orders out of their belief. People engage in the holiness of marriage through love, but also belief in the sacrality of what they are engaged in, that their marriages are sacred as well as good and, de and good and, uh, and fruitful. See? We are believers that in the death of Christ, we are redeemed. In his resurrection, we are called to perfection. See? If you don't believe in Christ, Christianity is a joke. It's a farce. Why would you believe in some guy some guy gets himself clipped by the Romans, by the Jews and the Romans, crucified, huh? and died. You have to believe that he rose from the dead and that he is more than human. He is you and divine and divinely human, that he is the Redeemer. See? It takes an act of faith. But with that act of faith, we have hope that death isn't final that love is eternal and it's personal. I think of that all the time, all the time. I told you this again, 812 to 15 times. When I asked one time by a colleague what I saw, thought in paradise, what I looked forward to was being with those I have loved and been loved by, in Christ. But I want to be with my family and with Junie and all those who I have loved and been loved by, all with whom I have walked this life, my gang from home, Frankie Cabola and all. Oh, those, you, I want the, my, the narrative, the people of my narrative, I want to be with them again, now forevermore. I want to be with them forever. No more tears, no more, I love that, that part in the funeral ritual. No more tears, no more sorrow, no more death. 
that in Christ, in the risen Christ, we die with Christ and rise with Christ, and forevermore we are in his company. What a gloriously hopeful thought, isn't it? That death isn't final. That though I grieve for their loss, I grieve with hope that death isn't final. And one day we will be together again in paradise. No more tears, no more sorrow. Isn't that neat? That's Abrahamic faith. His wife was as good from a point of view of reproduction, you know, capable of bearing a child. She might as well be dead. And yet because he believed, from her came life. You could think of her, in a sense, as, you, as the tomb out of which Christ arises. Right? And the resurrection. She was as good as dead. So was he, the old goat, the old Abraham. And yet an entire nation emerges from him. Why? Because he believed. I believed against all evidence to the contrary, he believed. And we believe in Christ rising from the dead. And in rising from the dead, transforming what is good into what is holy, what is temporal into what is eternal. Death into life. Now, yeah. I cling to my faith because my faith gives me hope that in Christ and through Christ and with Christ, love is eternal and it's personal. I will be with those I have loved and been loved by in Christ forevermore, forevermore. No longer tears and loss, only the intimacy of friendship and love, the actions of loving together face to face now forevermore. Forevermore. I love that. I trust it. In my old age, I have no fear of death, actually. I don't. Maybe I should. Maybe I'm too stupid. But at 82, I don't have it. But I do have a desire to be with my family again. I miss my family in a way I haven't in the past. And the people of my life, Junie, of so many of my classmates in the monastery. Maybe I'm beginning to look forward to being with them once again but this time forevermore. I imagine you are listening to this, have buried many in your life, I bet, because I would assume most people watching these things are either homebound or are people in my age group. We've buried those we have loved and been loved by. But we bury with hope that we will all rise again, be together, where there will no longer be tears or sorrow, no more loss only the fullness of life forevermore, together, where love is deep, profoundly and radically, foreverly personal. I didn't say any of that right. It's personal. It's not a philosophic abstraction. Love is personal. And one day we will be together, commun communing in community of persons whom we have loved and loved by, our story, our way, glorified in Christ forever. It's a wonderful thing to think about. Yeah. It's the Easter of our hope. The Easter of our hope. 